you crack through your egg and tumble into cold, murky water. The moment your tiny body breaks free from that shell, you're destined to become the scientific community's biggest marvel, basically nature's own wolverine with gills. But right now, you're just a pathetic, helpless speck. Hundreds of equally clueless siblings surround you, all wiggling aimlessly in the murk. And here's the first life lesson. Those aren't just siblings, they're competitors. That brother swimming toward you with his mouth open, he's not coming to say hi, he's checking if you're small enough to eat. Welcome to Axolotl Life, where family reunions double as buffets. You dart away, hiding among some underwater weeds. Your nearly transparent body trembles, your only defense being that you're basically invisible. Through the plants, you watch as a sister devours a brother, half her size. Nature's version of population control just went down, and you just watched a snuff film starring your own family. Great. Hunger hits like a brick after a few hours. A tiny worm wiggles by, practically dancing in front of you. This is your moment. You lunge forward, mouth open wide, and miss completely. The worm doesn't even flinch. Just keeps wiggling, as if to say, Nice try, loser. You try again, another embarrassing miss. Third attempt, same result. On your fourth try, you finally catch that smug little worm. <coughs> Victory. It's not exactly a highlight reel moment, but hey, you just bought yourself another day of existence. Days pass and weird things start growing from the sides of your head, frilly red gills that wave with every current, basically screaming, Eat me! to anything passing by. Seriously? Who puts breathing organs on the outside? It's like evolution had a fever dream and decided, Let's make this one extra ridiculous. A month in, and you've graduated from completely useless to mostly useless. You've figured out that staying completely still, then striking fast works better than your previous strategy of frantic lunging. You're learning, slowly, very, very slowly. Your hunting success rate has improved from abysmal to merely terrible. About one in three attempts now results in a meal, which in axolotl terms practically makes you an apex predator. The standards are pretty low down here. Three months in, disaster strikes. While hunting near a sunken branch, your leg gets caught and twists badly. Pain shoots through your body as you hear a tiny crack. You pull free, but your right front leg hangs uselessly, clearly broken. Blood clouds the water around you, basically ringing the dinner bell for anything nearby. For any normal animal, this would be game over. An injured predator quickly becomes someone else's dinner. But you're not a normal animal. You're basically the dead pool of the lake. Within days, your broken leg starts changing. The damaged parts dissolve as new cells multiply at superhero speed. A week later, you have a tiny nub. After three weeks, you're sporting a brand new leg. No scar, no limp. Works perfectly. If you could talk, you'd be like, Hey predators, don't eat me whole. Just take a leg. I'll grow it back by next Tuesday. Scientists would pay thousands to stick you in a lab and study your regeneration powers. You can regrow almost anything. Legs, tail, gills, even parts of your heart, spinal cord, and brain. While human doctors are doing 12-hour surgeries to repair organs, you're casually regrowing entire body parts like it's nothing. Oh, you had a heart transplant? That's cute. I regrew 80% of my heart last month while binge-watching The Lake's Got Talent. By six months, you've claimed territory, a small patch of lake bottom with thick plants, good hiding spots, and plenty of food. You didn't even have to fight for it. The previous owner, another axolotl, just stared at you before swimming away when you puffed out your gills and moved forward with confidence. It's the underwater equivalent of faking it till you make it. Your days fall into a comfortable routine. Hunt, hide, repeat. Sometimes you venture out to explore new areas, but mostly you stick to what works. You've learned the hard way that adventure usually ends with something trying to eat you. I've been really then one day you sense a change in the water. Every axolotl seems restless. It's mating season, baby. Suddenly, showing off matters. As a male, you patrol your territory, flaring your gills dramatically at everything that moves, like you're auditioning for America's Next Top Axolotl. You practice your wiggle dance, the axolotl equivalent of a pickup line. It's less, hey girl, what's your sign? And more, look at these smooth moves, want some of my sperm packets? Romance isn't exactly your species' strong suit. When a female finally swims by, you freeze. She's gorgeous in that weird, alien salamander way that only an axolotl could appreciate. You do your dance dropping sperm packets on the lake bottom like they're rose petals. Huh? She gives you a look that could either mean, I'm interested, or you look ridiculous. It's hard to tell with axolotls. After what feels like an eternity of awkward wiggling, she scoops up your packets and swims off without so much as a goodbye nod. That's it. Dating accomplished. No texting the next day, no, let's just be friends speech. In the axolotl world, ghosting is just how relationships end, approximately five minutes after they begin. Life goes on. 
you grow bigger, your hunting improves, and you've managed to avoid becoming someone else's lunch for over a year. Practically a miracle in this eat-or-be-eaten underwater hellscape. One morning, you're hunting near the edge of your territory when something moves in the corner of your vision. It's huge, at least three times your size. Another axolotl, but older, battle-scarred, and clearly not impressed with your presence. You freeze, hoping he'll back off. He doesn't. Instead, he charges forward, jaws snapping. You dodge the first attack, but his second bite catches your tail. Pain flashes through you as he tears off a chunk. You twist free and dart under a rock, heart pounding. The intruder circles your hiding spot, waiting. Minutes pass. Finally, he loses interest and swims off to find easier prey. You emerge, your tail now a ragged stump. But you're not worried. Within weeks, it'll be good as new. Being a real-life superhero has its perks. Years pass. You've survived longer than most, growing to an impressive size. Your regeneration powers have gotten you out of countless tight spots. That time a turtle bit off two of your legs? No problem. The heron that punctured your side with its beak before you wriggled free? Just a flesh wound. You're practically invincible, or so you thought. On a perfectly ordinary day, you're hunting near some floating plants when a shadow passes overhead. You've seen enough shadows to know this one's trouble. A heron, the axolotl's ancient enemy. You freeze, pressing yourself against the lake bottom. The heron stands motionless, its reflection rippling on the water's surface. One minute passes. Two, you don't move a muscle, barely even filtering water through your gills. Just when you think it's given up, the heron strikes, its beak plunging into the water like a spear. You dodge left, barely escaping. The heron strikes again, and again you evade. It's like an underwater ballet of death, and you're nailing all your moves. The heron pulls back, watching. You stay hidden, congratulating yourself on outsmarting a predator that's been hunting your kind since dinosaurs roamed the earth. You've done it. You've survived another day. That's when something slams into you from behind. You didn't see the tilapia approach. Didn't hear it. One second you're celebrating your victory against the heron, the next you're in the jaws of a fish twice your size. There's a moment of crushing pressure, then darkness. No dramatic music, no slow motion final scene, no chance to regenerate, just lights out, mid-thought. That's lake life for you, no matter how good you are, no matter how many times you've cheated death with your superhero healing, eventually something bigger or faster or luckier comes along and game over. Somewhere in the same lake, one of your 400 offspring cracks through its egg and tumbles into the cold, murky water, completely unaware that it's about to begin the same wild journey. It has no idea about the challenges ahead, or that it's basically nature's own wolverine with gills. But right now, it's just a pathetic, helpless speck, and the cycle begins again. If you enjoyed this wild ride through an axolotl's life, let us know what creature you'd like us to feature next. Drop your suggestions in the comments, email us, or share this with a friend who loves bizarre animal facts. And hey, if you've got an amazing animal encounter of your own, we'd love to hear it. Thank you for watching.